Hey, what's up, guys? So today I'm going to be doing a um, minor update on my Necroz Domatica deck, and not too much has really honestly changed about it, save for a few different cards and a couple things that I'm going to be trying out just to see if um, the deck can work in this particular format. Now I played uh, a similar version of this deck on Dual Master, and I've done pretty well with it, and um, I kind of um, understand that its weaknesses and its strength and stuff like that um, but when playing in the TCG it's definitely different uh, I think this deck has a, diff uh, a more difficult time um, in a um, in a world where uh, Maxi doesn't really exist uh, for some reasons I'll I'll talk about in a second here um, but yeah in in Duel Masters this deck is very good it um, it's uh, got me to platinum several different times and my win rate on it is has been pretty good um, but yeah just in, in real life in the TCG where I live and play in mostly decks a lot harder to to pilot and um, but yeah we're, we're gonna try to talk about a little bit about that and then show you some cards that I've chosen to kinda try to combat some of that in the TCG and hopefully uh, help the deck function a little bit better uh, yeah but let's let's go ahead and go over the deck um, since my last update, I did kind of get some more max rarity cards, I guess. Upgrade the deck in terms of um, its rarity and um, just because I like the deck so much. It's a, it's a pet deck of mine, you know. It's definitely not a, a competitive, you know, YCS winning deck or even a um, regional deck. It, it probably can do pretty well at locals and, um, you know, but in terms of like um, its performance and consistency, Compared to the current meta deck, especially with new Albad stuff, probably not as good. Um, but still, still fun to play in and pilot. So let's um, start it off. Um, so yep, so we still got our triple diviner here. It's our best starter. Um, it's the one that we want to start off with first, um, and it can branch you into several different plays and a couple of different combos you can do with the uh, hero of the diviner. I'm sure if you've seen some of the combos and stuff you can do with this card it's pretty f cool uh, you can synchro you can link away with it um, you can tribute it off and um, you know do some cool stuff but yeah it's, the, it's our best starter it's even if you don't combo with this card um, it's just a great card as normal summon and search your ritual card so it's always usually a plus one you know sometimes it can be a plus three or, or more than that depending on how um, you play the card uh, to combo off the card, you uh, you play one egg. Um, so this egg is, is when the diviner is tributed. You summon the egg out and search for the sanctuary, which allows you to extend your plays a little bit more. Um, so it's just an extender, really. The egg is not that terrible in in of itself. I I have normal summon the egg, search for the thing, send a link away with it uh, for an armorage or something like that. So the egg itself is not like. Uh, you know, completely bad, but honestly, you, you don't want to draw it. But you know, um, it is still usable without um, if you do draw it. Uh, and then next, I'm just going to go over the Dogmatica package. Um, and then, yeah, so I'm playing one Fleur. Uh, Fleur is not super helpful in this deck or super duper great in the deck, mainly because you don't have any extra deck monsters on the board yourself. So, this card is entirely dependent on your opponent and what they're playing. If they're playing extra deck stuff, great, this card is good. Uh, if they're not playing any extra deck cards, um, this card is going to be bad. So, um, yeah, I'm just playing one knight here um, just because of that reason. And, yeah, you don't need to play more than that, I think. Um, next off, I'm playing two Maximus here. I really like Maximus in this, in this deck. It's a bit of a gamble, though, when you do use this effect. You're going to hope your opponent doesn't have any any way to capitalize on uh, dumping, um, you know, extra monster or extra deck monsters to the graveyard. So it's a bit of a gamble, but I, I like two because um, uh, hard drawing it or searching out with Ecclesia is not the worst thing. You could cut it down to one, honestly, if you wanted to, but I like the redundancy of two. Um, granted, you can also play, um, you know, use a deer and grab this back to your hand. So that's also an option there. Um. And next off here, I got Triple Ecclesia. Now Ecclesia is, um, I don't think you really honestly need to run three of her. 
you probably I don't just cut her down to two and she'd be fine because you, you do have Nadir um, and you do have um, the Herald as a normal summon so um, I only like seeing her plus the Herald because if you do Herald into a extra deck monster you can still special summon her and um, continue your combo off and it just gives you something to do with your normal summon this deck doesn't normal summon at all really besides um, Ecclesia and the um, the Herald so I think it's okay to play at three it's, it's still a plus one I sometimes like like starting off with her because people tend to um, they'll, they'll ash her or they'll um, impermanence her or something like that which is fine like it's not the worst thing if they do that it, um, it's still a, a minus for them and you're still gaining advantage that way but if they don't then uh, you usually want to search for the, the Maximus and then just extend your combo from there and build a, a board um, I am playing two um, Ash Blossoms. I, I th think the deck can't play too much interaction without breaking itself. So um, yeah, I'm just playing two still good card. There's other there's other tra hand traps and stuff like that you can play, but I think I like Ash at two here, um, and that's the only real hand trap I play. Um, next up for the rituals uh, spells, you got two Clydo. One cycle and one mirror. Um, they're all pretty much recyclable, and so you you honestly don't really need more than one copy of uh, of each. This is namely to do to, uh, to be used for um, to get out Trish. So you you banish the the Colossus and the Brio to get out Trish. This is used for the combo uh, with the Herald, and this is namely used to get out um, um, Unicorn and uh, other stuff. So. Yeah, just that the these four have been working well for me. I don't think you need any more than that, because um, they are recyclable. You you can always use prep to add them back to your hand, or you can shuffle them back into your deck with um, ritual sanctuary. So um, unless you banish it for its effect, then just be careful of that. But otherwise, they're they're uh, they're recy recyclable. So you, I don't think you need to play uh, more than four or five at the at most. Um, next off, you have the triple brio. Uh, the heart of the deck, basically your Rhoda. Um, not much to explain. Um, yeah, you definitely want to play that. Um, Unicorn here, Unicorn, uh, the best monster to kind of sit on, uh, especially in today's meta where everyone's kind of spamming um, extra deck monsters. You want to sit on this thing and uh, protect it if you can. Um, and it, uh, the secondary effect doesn't always come up that often, but you can always pitch it to add. Uh, Brio Knack or add any um, Necros card back from the graveyard to your hand, so that's always kind of relevant there. Uh, next off, you have two Colossus. Um, yeah, you just want to search your your mirrors. Um, sometimes you bring them out. Rarely do you bring them out, but sometimes you will, and um, he helps there. Uh, next off, you have uh, Tristula. Um, just the one of, um, just so you can. Um, Punish your opponent, uh, and it's still a pretty good removal card um, overall. You rarely use his effect where to, to pitch him to negate a targeting card, but yeah, uh, the one Trishla, so uh, I still like that there. Um, and then next off, uh, the Dogmatic and White Knight. Uh, you can combo. Um, if you play Nadir, you can. Um, you have this in your deck. Nadir becomes a one card, summon this guy out for a plus potentially. Uh, two or three so yeah uh, he's kind of like your way to um, get some advantage and some disruption on your opponent's turn um, next off your other really good searcher your uh, preparation of rights here uh, searches adds um, spell cards uh, ritual spell cards from the grave to the hand uh, pretty good there and then this card I'm, I'm going to test out this card um, it's an old oldie but goodie here so um, I was playing impermanences, but impermanences wasn't, wasn't really doing what I wanted to do, namely because uh, with the permanence, yes, I want to stop um, monster effects, but the majority of the monster effects that I'm stopping are going to be extra deck monsters, and Unicorn by itself usually already does that. So for the most part, um, I 
didn't think I need. I never really cared for impermanence in this particular deck. Like I, I've tried it. I've used it. Like it's great if you're going second. You know, you you use it to disrupt your opponent. It is a hand trap. Um, going first, it's it's so so. You know, if you if you got your unicorn, it's kind of redundant at that point. Um, oftentimes they'll just bring out something um, that's big and they'll just run over unicorn. So um, this is why I'm trying out Book of Moon. So Book of Moon serves basically two purpose here. It's to protect Unicor from be getting run over. So if they uh, if they summon something uh, like a fusion or something like that, you can always book it. Obviously, Book of Moon is not that great against Link Monsters. Like, you can't flip a Link Monster face down. Understandable. But uh, Unicor should generally um, be able to um, negate the um, Link Monster's effect. And hopefully, they're most Link Monsters are, are not that big. Uh, unless they're going to Link 4 or 3 rating. Most uh, Link 2s and or Link 1 monsters, they can't run over Unicorn, so um, that's fine. What you're going to namely try to do is stop them from going to Link 3 and Link 4, where if they get big enough, they might be able to run over Unicorn. Um, now, or they summon something like, they just know, um, you know, special summon like Blue Eyes or something, for example. Um, you know, obviously, um, they could just summon that and run over Unicorn, and Unicorn wouldn't stop its effect either. So... Um, that's the main thing with with Book of Moon is to protect Unicorn, and it also acts as disruption and um, a way for you to. Um, it's also kind of like a mini impermanence in some sense. So like, if they had like something like um, like a window, or they had a um, um, I don't even a Borlord Savage Dragon, you activate Book of Moon, they have to negate it. Otherwise, you flip that monster face down, they lose their ability to negate. Um, and obviously that's pretty good. It's not that great against like an Alpalusa, but you know whatever's. Um, but yeah, like the Book of Moon will kind of act as that sort of like, um, n you know, negation for continuous effects. Um, you know, obviously if it's a, a trigger effect, this Book of Moon isn't isn't going to do anything. But um, that's besides the point there. Uh, the other thing it's going to be good for is to disrupt your opponent if they're trying to link or they're trying to exceed. Or if you're trying to sink, well, you just need to book one of their materials. So you book one of their materials, they're probably gonna have to stop there. So, like, for example, if they summon out Ray and they're, they're trying to go into, um, you know, Kagari or something like that, you activate Book of Moon, you flip the Ray face down, and now they're just stuck with a, a face down Ray. They can't link away the Ray into something else, you know? So, that's, that's just kind of like, you just have to know what your opponent is doing. Book of Moon is a card I think is very skillful. You just have to know when to activate it and how to use it uh, to be really good. I I had Book of Moon used against me too, especially you know when um, back then when it, when it was at one. Um, you know this this card was crazy back then. It was like the the go to um, card to like remove stuff to interact with your opponent. It was just a staple back then. It was a powerhouse. Obviously nowadays because of the introduction of links and you know maybe some pendulum stuff, it's it's definitely fallen out of favor for more you know. Uh, more proactive cards or more cards that um, that um, try to gain you advantage or like other hand traps like it's Book of Moon has been basically replaced by hand traps nowadays like you have Ash Blossoms you got Ghost Ogres you got Impermanence you got Nibiru you have all that stuff um, you know it's which is great and handy and dandy but in this deck here I think I want to try to sit on the Unicorn and um, force my opponent to try to run it over or waste a lot of resources trying to get rid of it, and I think uh, I'm gonna try out Book of Moon here to see how that does. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know if it will be good or not. Uh, I'll test play it and uh, we'll see. Um, and this is namely only in TCG. Uh, I'll explain that uh, in that in a second here too. Um, so the next off, you still got two new deers. Um, not much to say about that. Uh, I do have triple tactic talents now, so I'm give that a shot in this particular deck it has worked pretty well for the most part they try to ash you or um, do something um, to negate you or whatever you know draw two is pretty good you can also snipe a card from their hand or you can go for an OTK if they're really uh, not too careful you can steal their monsters and bring out a bunch of your own monsters and just OTK them so uh, yeah triple attack that tactics talent has been pretty handy in that sense uh, one call by the grave um, still a real good hand anti hand trap card and disruption DD crow uh, I still really like this card. Um, I, I think it's good at two or one. 
don't think I should ever come back to three though. Um, it's a little too dumb. Um, and then we have Ritual Century for the combo, um, Calamity for um, to get out um, White Knight, and then finally just two punishments here. Not running any other traps. Uh, I think punishments probably the best trap to run in this particular deck. It's the most versatile um, trap because you have you know you have um, Entis and stuff like that to dump with this. You get if your opponent does something really weak, you can dump a Herald, Search, and pop a card. So yeah, probably the best. I don't want to run three because if three will get cloggy, especially if you're going second. Um, if you, you draw like three of these going second, you're you're basically dead. Um, so. This deck wants to go first, and I guess the, another reason why I like Book of Moon it's it's good going both first and second. Going first, you get out Unicorn, you set Book of Moon, you can protect Unicorn. We don't play Valk anymore, and I think that's the main thing that this deck is struggling against is big monsters. Real big monsters are bigger than 27, bigger than 23. This deck has an absolute shit time dealing with like, you know, those big ass monsters. So you want to. You want to get something that can kind of you know make um, that that basically can protect Unicorn um, and maybe even uh, allow you to run over some stuff if they they have really low defense. You know you can book it running it over, cool. Um, and then going second, like you can use this to like you know flip out uh, flip down monsters with effects that are detrimental to you. So like you know if they have like you know a Thunder Dragon, uh, you know Colossus or something like that. You flip the Thunder Dragon down and. Um, you can beat it over or something like that. Now, that. Now that's just an example, you know, obviously there's other utilities for this card. So I think Book of Moon, um, I will try it out. I'll let you guys know how this works out. Um, it is an oldie uh, boomer <laughs> card, but um, yeah, it's been on, under the radar and I think it can kind of make a resurgence in, in this, this particular deck. So um, I'm running 41 cards right now. So um, yeah, that's, that's the main deck. And what I'm talking about, why this deck does so much better in Master Duel is be is because of Max C. So oftentimes, if you set up a board and then you max uh, and their opponent goes and they try to do some stuff, you Max C them. Now they have to choose either to like set and pass, um, or try to spend a bunch of cards to beat over Unicorn because most people cannot run over Unicorn without doing a couple of special summons to bring out something that's bigger. Or stronger than Unicorn to run him over, and I think that's why the Max C works really well in the deck. Is just because it forces your opponent to kind of choose to either give you a bunch of cards or try to beat over Unicorn to continue their play, and um, that's why the deck does so well in Master Duel. Like um, Max C in other decks, it's it it's it acts as just you know obviously it's it's like a vanities you know you, you're forcing you're forcing your opponent to choose, but uh, Max C plus like a Unicorn or Max C plus Something that's destructive is um, is a really good thing to just kind of sit on and and force your opponent to kind of have to try to outplay it without um, giving you too many cards. If they give you too many cards, you you can probably bring out another unicorn on your turn and you know go from there. So yeah, I think um, that's why um, I'm doing so well in the current uh, dual master meta is because of maxi plus unicorn, very strong combo, hard for people to win. Uh, over no matter what deck they're playing they're playing tri brigades they're playing um heroes they're playing whatever unicorn plus maxi is just nearly impossible to beat for most people um uh, it's it's like the old fashioned necros deck of 20 uh was it 2017 or um i think it was 2017 where you go unicorn and you flip over vanity's emptiness and you kind of just watch your opponent opponent cry from there um like they can't do that or like unicorn under a, a dejin same idea, like, Unicorn needs something to back it up in order for it to be a very powerful card. Oftentimes, um, you know, in, like, the old decks, you, you can play, um, you know, uh, the um, Valk to protect Unicorn from being run over. But Valk lately has been kind of overwhelming, honestly. I, I just never liked it, um, especially if you're not playing Shrit anymore. Like, Valk is almost impossible to summon out without, like... Dumping two unicorns to the graveyard and using a um, a mirror, or maybe you could try to Clido it out, but that doesn't feel that good either. So um, for the most part, um, most Necros decks nowadays they have completely removed Valk, and there's not much like Valk was good 
in mirror matches because you would Valk yourself, draw two cards, and your opponent couldn't trish you. Nowadays, you know, you're not really worried about that. You're not really trying to sack the Valk off to try to stop your opponent from trishing you. Nowadays, if you leave an empty board, you're probably going to die. Um, so, it's like an OTK or something, or it's an Axis Code Talker. So, um, that's the reason why uh, I think most competitive Necros deck has just done away with Valk. Um, and done away with like Gunnir and stuff like that. There's, they're good cards, but just not for what's currently in the meta right now. They're, they're a little too slow, or they're a little... They don't make much of an impact anymore as they used to. So I, I think that's why we've kind of moved away from um, that particular engine. Or that those particular Necros cards. Now, my extra deck hasn't really changed much, so I'm just going to kind of show it off. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. But um, not, not too much has changed here. And hopefully, I haven't really been paying attention, but hopefully the glare is not too bad. Um, there's a bit of sunlight in my room now, right now. Um, yeah, not too much to say about the extra deck. Um, yeah, definitely Bumbolina's, or sorry, I keep calling her that, but um, Baroness here is probably the one. Um, com if you can combo off well, you can always uh, do like a one card combo off of Harold to get her out. Uh, it's, it actually happens pretty often, or if not, you can even summon out uh, an Omega. So these these three cards, the Harold, Omega, and uh, Baroness, are the three cards that you are usually gonna ever synchro out with. Um, with the uh, Herald, so um, yeah. And my side deck here, um, it's changed a little bit, but not too much. Still kind of experimenting around with it, seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, Thank Oseka, still a really good card. Um, great for um, if your opponent's not playing Solemn, so you just Dankle them against like a Sky Striker or something like that. Um, they kind of just sit on there and they cry a little bit. Can't activate anything, so still a pretty good card. Um, Triple Regeki, it could be anything. This, this this could be Nibiru, it could be Dark Rule No More, it could be um, Droplets, it could be whatever you want. I, I don't have um, Droplets, I don't have Nibirus. I do have Dark Rule no, no More, but those are in my other decks. So Regeki I like because it helps you get rid of really big stuff that this deck struggles with. Yeah, this deck definitely struggles with really big monsters. Because um, the biggest thing you pump out naturally is a 27 um, 27 uh, um, Trish and that's pretty easy to beat over the second biggest thing is a Fleur which is like 25 so if you can't you know pop them or something um, or you know get rid of them uh, the deck really has a hard time so yeah triple regeki for now um, and then triple cosmic cyclone uh, so this deck also loses hardcore to mystic mind in the main deck, I don't bother playing any outs in the Mystic Mind. So if they resolve Mystic Mind, you're probably going to have to scoop. So it comes down to you if you think you want to main deck some sort of out to Mystic Mind. Probably the best option to main deck then would probably be at least one Fetter Duster. Right now, I'm just putting it into my side um, just because. But uh, yeah, I have lost one or two games where I just didn't have an out game one against a Mystic Mind. And it, it feels bad, but it is what it is. So... Um, I just chose not to main deck anything for Mystic Mind. Um, most back rolls you can play through. It's just Mystic Mind. It's the one card that this this entire deck loses to. So, um, yeah, just just keep keep uh, keep in mind um, that might be the case. Now, Village Village has been pretty good, I would say. Um, I like Terraforming because Terraforming you can also search out Sanctuary if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, I opened up Village against a couple of decks that like Sky Strikers and stuff like that, and they just end up just scooping. Like they just couldn't do anything. Um, there's no way from the out this, um, not, nothing for them to activate to be able to get rid of Village. They would need like an evenly match or something um, to you know get rid of this. But yeah, that's that's where my um, I found that this card's kind of good going first. If you can go first, you can open up with this. You basically win against a lot of matchups. That you know don't, aren't playing spellcast or or not playing a an out to uh, um, to this card. So this is basically our version of Mystic Mind. If you can get this out, um, your opponent's gonna be like, oh crap, you know. So um, I like it. Uh, and evenly match just because I have no idea what else to throw in. Um, you can put in whatever you want, but I think evenly is not a bad card. Um, especially going second, you give up your battle phase, but you can uh, kind of obliterate your opponent's board. So, um, yeah, that's an option. 
really good against a lot of trap decks. So like if you're playing against a, a deck that's playing a lot of back row, you probably want to play Evenly or Danko or um, you know Cosmic and stuff like that. It's kind of redundant, I guess. Like to play both, you know, a Danko and to play both. Um, like all these are just kind of board wipes and removal in your side deck. Um, but I think that's that's all this deck can really do is just play a bunch of removal um, and try to keep the main deck somewhat uh, consistent uh, and just kind of play through your opponent's board. But yeah, um, and that's really it. So uh, let me know what you guys think. I am going to play or test play the deck a bit more um, and go from there. Um, but yeah, right now I, I really want to give Book of Moon a try. Um, and just see how this this card has worked for for me in the past, and um, in theory it should still be pretty good. Um, now I don't know if if three is the right right number, maybe two is, but I'll, I'll go ahead and try out three just to see what it does, and hopefully that um, kind of uh, answers my uh, frustration with um, not being on the have um, Unicorn being being a, a staying power on the board. As long as you can resolve Unicorn and you can keep him on the board. Like if he dies naturally to like a regeki or a lightning storm, you know that's that's fine. But it's more frustrating when your opponent just runs it over with a a bigger monster. So I think these two will attempt. We're gonna attempt to try to keep Unicorn alive, and um, that's gonna be the main strategy. Same thing, same idea with punishment. Both punishment and um, the Book of Moon are meant to kind of keep Unicorn alive. There are cards that that you know can't be destroyed by you know effects, and so those cards you can just book a moon instead. And this is going second. It's kind of bad, which is why I didn't want to play more than two. It's a real good card, but if you you put if you are going second, your opponent forces you to go second. Drawing multiple punishment is not a good good sign. So uh, opted for two, and it is searchable with Ecclesia. So uh, I don't think you need more than two there. But yeah. Uh, we'll we'll give Book Moon a shot and see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That's all I got for you guys. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the update. And I'll catch you guys later.